Hey everybody, how you doing? Chad Wilson Smith here from JTSStrength.com. Ryan Brown, Team Juggernaut member and uh, owner here at Derby City CrossFit, Dark Side Strength and Conditioning in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, bringing to you the Diaphragmatic Breathing 101. So Ryan's going to be taking me through a lot of drills that can help you guys improve your mobility, your low back health, just the way that your body functions, just through the way you breathe. All right, so first thing I want to talk about is you know, why does the breathing matter so much? I know that I talk about it all the time with people. Uh, that's mostly just because 90% of the people that I see come in here have some type of breathing. Maybe it's not a big malfunction in their breathing that's causing a lot of problems, but we can make a lot of minor tweaks and get a lot of extra performance without ever actually even having to do anything in the weight room. It just kind of changes the way that you're breathing and move a lot better. You know, you breathe roughly 20,000 times a day. So if you're doing that incorrect, and that's 20,000 times a day that you're tugging yourself out of position, you might be tugging your neck forward, maybe internally rotating your shoulders, depending on what type of breathing pattern you have. Um, but any, any way it goes, you do it so often and it's such an integral part of what you're doing and you're lifting and everything. If you're not doing it correct, then you're leaving a lot of pounds on the table. Um, you know, a lot of the mobility issues are gonna be cleared up with just a lot better breathing, which I'm about to show here. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about, you know, the goals of this video here are for you to be able to identify some poor breathing patterns um, and then be able to identify good breathing patterns and kind of see the difference between what people are doing and then also to, you know, obviously be able to kind of correct those patterns uh, so that you can kind of make some change in people and get some extra performance. So the first thing I want to do, we're going to look, through, we're going to look at these breathing patterns first standing um, and then we're going to lay down on the table here where it's a little bit easier for me to uh, make the change because most people, if they have a poor breathing pattern standing, you're going to have to get into an easier position uh, where they're not fighting gravity in order to learn the new breathing pattern. But you're probably going to be identifying the poor breathing pattern in a standing position uh, because most of the time people are standing up. So I'm going to have Chad here, he's going to turn to the side. Now, I want to just kind of focus on a couple of things that people are doing when they're breathing. Um, there's a lot of different ways things can go wrong. There's, you know, asymmetries that can be imbalanced left to right, but I just want to kind of focus on a couple of things. That way, you know, you're going to be able to make a lot of progress just with these couple of very basic things. So what I'm going to do now first is Chad's going to show his, uh, he's going to be a chest breather, all right? So take that big chest breath. All right, so a couple of things. The biggest thing that I want to point out as far as the lifting concern, when he takes that big chest breath like that, you go ahead and exhale. Let me see you do it again. I want you to focus on his back right here. So big chest breath. You see how he goes way into extension in his back when he takes that big chest breath. Now, that's going to have a couple of implications in your lift. If you watched the video that we talked about squatting uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about going way into extension here and how you create a lot of extra length in the hamstring. You create a lot, a lot of extra length in the hamstring, and the next thing you know, you start to be the guy that starts to squat like this, and you feel like your hamstrings are real, real tight, and you have a hard time getting depth in your squat, your chest starts falling forward, all kinds of bad things happen. The other thing about chest breathing is if you're doing it like that, when you go to take a big breath before you lift, the chances are that you're probably doing the same thing 20,000 times a day. What that does is he's pulling with his chest. Instead of using his diaphragm to have air push out from the inside to cause the chest to rise, he is pulling with his neck and his shoulders. So that pet minor that a lot of times causes a lot of problems and people get real, real tight because it's being overused or trying to lift their chest, with their shoulders, and their neck. And it's a big part of people's forward head posture and just all kinds of problems. The next thing I want to see is he's going to do a big belly breath. Now, the thing about the belly breath is it's, it is partially correct. And the bad thing about it is it's, it's the way that a lot of people go to try to correct their breathing pattern. But what happens is they don't, they don't finish the correction um, and then they end up with this. So just take a big, big breath in your belly and not really focus on any kind of rise in your chest. All right, go blow that out. And we watch and he does the same thing here. So go ahead, take that big breath again. That pushes his hips into more anterior tilt right here. And then we run into a lot of those same problems. Now with the belly breath, you're gonna run into a couple more problems even because now he's not really getting any air up into the top of his lung up here. And so then with that problem that a lot of people have is going to be why so many people are asking about assistance exercises for their upper back and all kinds of things. Because if you're filling your whole lung with air, you're gonna have pressure from the inside that's gonna be helping you maintain this posture. It's also gonna keep your thoracic spine in position. It's also gonna keep your scapula in position. So then your shoulder mobility is really improved, which we're gonna show that here in just a second when we lay it on the table. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is just not exhaling all the way, all right? Now, not exhaling all the way is usually kind of going to be 
lumped in part of the problem with doing one of those other two things that we just talked about. But the thing is, if he's not exhaling, go ahead. And that one is hard to hear here. So listen to people when they exhale, and you're going to hear this just like that instead of a long, hard. But somehow people will take in this much air, and they'll only blow out that much air. And what happens, especially as you start to do that 20,000 times a day, the hip starts to get stuck in that anteriorly tilted position. And then you start to stretch out these deeper hip flexors that connect your lower back and run out to the front. They become chronically stretched out. And the farther and farther you get your hip out of position, the harder and harder it is going to be to be able to breathe correctly. And then you're going to run into all kinds of problems because everyone already knows that if you want to be an athlete, the only thing that matters is really your hips. All right. So now I'm going to lay Chad down on the table and we're going to kind of look at this stuff again. Alright, so what I want to see, you know, a lot of times whenever I'm looking at people's breathing, I'll just put them on a the table here um, so they can get an idea. I'm going to externally rotate his shoulders, palms are going to be up. And now what I want to do is I just want to take a look and I want you to just do whatever feels natural. I want you to take a big breath here. Good, so we're watching Chad. What I see is I see a lot of expansion right here in his belly. All right, His chest starts to rise a little bit. Chad, I don't know if you know this, but Chad's a pretty strong guy. So he is... He's pushing his belly out quite a bit though, and we can tell that his chest, especially over here, is not quite really rising a lot. It doesn't take a whole, you know, people talk about breathing in their belly, and you know, I find this that powerlifters make this mistake a lot, because you know that you're supposed to breathe out, and you're supposed to push out against the belt. And that's right, you should do that. You need to understand that the belt is only there to add resistance to your abs to stay tighter so that you can drive air up. It's, it doesn't take a lot of, uh, anatomy experience to understand the lungs are up here. So if you're breathing and the only thing that you see expanding is down here in the belly, then obviously you're not getting air into your lungs. And that's, that's where air goes. Lungs. Um, so what I want to see now is that I'm going to pay attention to his exhale as well. So let's take a big breath. And then I want to see him exhale. Good. Not bad. And we see as he exhales, I should see everything start to sink down. All right. His back should be flat against the ground here, and I want to make sure that he's in a neutral hip position. Now, Chaz is pretty good. Some people I'll see come in here, and their exhale will go, and then that's all they can do. And I say, no, 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 I want you to exhale all the way. So when you're looking at people and you're trying to, you know, assess someone's breathing pattern, just don't coach them on it. You know, tell them you just want to see a big breath, and just tell them you want to see an exhale. Don't tell them what you're actually looking for, because then it becomes pretty easy to cheat. Um, because they want, they know what you're looking for, all right? So we're not going to coach that. I'm just going to ask to assess the breathing pattern. Now, now what I want to see is we're going to try to correct this a little bit. In a good breathing pattern, what I should see is he's going to initiate this breath with his diaphragm, just like he was supposed to, which this is what he's already doing, all right? So he's going to start that breath, and I'm going to see this belly rise just a little bit before his chest moves up at all. So take that in just a little bit. All right, so as his belly rises a little bit, now what we want to do is tighten up the abs as hard as you can. Your abs are there to offer resistance to your diaphragm. And I just used the analogy a second ago, you know, if I stand in the middle of the room and I shove something, I can push so hard. If I was to put my back against the wall and I push something, I can push a lot harder. So when you're trying to think about the way to breathe, understand that your abs are the wall, and then after you can get yourself against the wall, you're gonna be able to push a lot harder. And being able to drive air up into the very top of the lung with your diaphragm is what we want to do. So he's going to take a little breath in. He's going to get real, real tight in his abs, and he's going to keep sucking in. Now, he's not pulling with his chest. He's still sucking in air with his diaphragm. But now what I want to see is, yes, more and more and more, you can see his chest starts to rise more and more and more, and we start to push air into the top of the lung up here. Now, go ahead and exhale that. Now, on the exhale, Chad's exhale isn't bad, so it's kind of a hard example, but on the exhale, if you start to see people do this, just like that, coaching the exhale, we want to exhale fully. You have to get all the air out of your lungs because that's going to help reset the position of your hip. Just like we were talking about in the standing, if you don't ever exhale, then you start to get stuck in this really tilted position. And then that's going to cause all kinds of problems in your squat or basically every single lift that you can do. All right, so as we exhale, the coaching point, your hips right here, as everything depresses, your hips, we are trying to leave the, don't squeeze your butt, but we're trying to pull the hips up and try to think about a neutral position for the hips. 
and then on the next breath, we're going to try to maintain that position, keep the abs tight, but we're still going to draw air in with the diaphragm. So let's see that. Tight, 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 drawing more, 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 suck in air. And we're always making sure the back of the neck is long. Depending on what type of breathing, if someone is a chest breather, you're going to have to cue that over and over and over because it is going to be feel natural for them to go into big time neck extension to try to take air in. But that is not where it goes. The chin should stay tucked. We should always think about making the back of the neck long. He's going to go ahead and exhale that. Now what I want to do real quick is just show a neat little trick about how we can gain a little range of motion. We did this with Chad's other shoulder just a second ago. So, Chad, big guy right here, we're gonna push this down. I just wanna look and see how his shoulder is internally rotating here. And right here, we get, you get stuck right, right there. Kind of dish. I mean, we can probably stretch real hard, but I don't wanna stretch. I just wanna see where it naturally goes. Now, Chad's gonna take a real big breath in. Tight right here, he's gonna drive air up into his shoulder. More, 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 more. I feel like you're gonna pop back your head slow. Good, more, more, more. Now the idea being that as we fill the top of the lung up here, we push the shoulder back in the position that it goes, and we start to create a lot more space, a lot more freedom of movement. We want to see where we go now. And that, I'm not even sure. This isn't even stretching. That just kind of fell down. Does that feel? So you can see a massive difference, and that's the type of instant change now I'm talking about. A lot of people are stretching internal rotation in their shoulders, stretching internal rotation in their shoulders, but it's really just a matter of being able to create some space from the inside and push the shoulder back where it goes and all of a sudden this stuff frees right up and we don't even have to stretch it. Now, as far as corrections go, a lot, Chad is not the best example of somebody for bad breathing. Obviously, someone who squats 900 pounds can't be that bad at breathing because they're able to maintain their torso in an upright position with 900 pounds on their back, so they cannot be that bad. But what I see a lot of times, you know, Sometimes with athletes, but almost you know 95% of the time with our everyday clients that come in for CrossFit or whatever, is that they aren't even strong enough to be able to do that on their own. A lot of times, maybe I'll give some resistance here um, to you know give some artificial abs to help drive air up there, but they're not strong enough. So what we're going to do to make these corrections of people's breathing patterns, we're going to have to put them into an easier position um, because in this position here, this is probably second down from breathing standing up, it's gonna be the hardest. All right, so the second thing we can do, you can bring your knees up just like this. This is gonna add some stability to the hip and gonna make it easier for your abs to stay in the correct position and you to be able to drive it up. Now, most everyone, I'm gonna take them even further back and we're gonna go over here and lay down on the wall and do our breathing. What we're doing now, we're trying to get down into a little bit easier of a position to breathe. Now, right off the bat, I wanna go ahead and point out that for Chad's breathing, this is not at all what I'd have him to do. This is a much easier position than he needs to be in, uh, and he's perfectly capable of breathing in a much more difficult position, so there's no reason to go all the way back to here. But I do see tons and tons and tons of people, um, some of them even pretty solid athletes, uh, that need to go all the way back to this position to learn to kind of reset the breathing pattern. All right, so talk about this position first. All right, I want 90 degrees at the knee, and I want 90 degrees at the hip, so I'm going to scoot him down just a little bit more. All right, now, when you think about feet on the wall, if I'm gonna to try to reset my breathing pattern, then I want everything lined up perfectly because there's, there's no reason not to do it perfectly here. It's not like it's a heavy squat and your knee comes in a little bit and technique just goes a little. There's no reason that in something like this, we're not focused on doing everything absolutely perfectly. So what I wanna do first is I'm gonna start looking at his feet, just like I would any other lift. What I should see, I want his feet perfectly straight, right here. His knee should be out over his second toe. All right, and then when we're thinking about putting pressure under the wall, we should have three points of contact with the foot. So your big toe, your little toe, and your heel should all be putting equal pressure under the wall. All right, knee stays right out over the second toe, and so we should have a nice straight line, second toe, knee, hip, and shoulder, just like that, which that looks good right here. All right, now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it easier to get air up into the lungs. So I'm gonna try to create a little space. I'm gonna externally rotate his shoulders, so palms are gonna be up. And the other thing, just look at his head position here, and a part of this is just because Chad's traps are so huge, but I always wanna cue chin tucked in, back of the neck long. And I'm telling you that you will see this 100 million times is that when people go to breathe, they are going to try to go into neck extension, especially if they're the type of you know, chest breather that is so used to that. Whenever you tell them to take a big breath, the first thing that will happen is their chin will go. 
and that's what they feel like. So you're going to have to constantly cue back of your neck long, back of your neck long. All right. So now what I'm going to have him do is the same thing we were doing on the table. He's going to always breathe in through the nose. So he's going to take a big breath in, tighten up, tighten up, and we're going to draw more and more and air up. And then I want him to exhale fully. So blow hard. Blow, 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 blow. And then keep tight right here. And now we're going to inhale again through the nose. Tight, 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 tight. Keep going. He'll go through this, you know, depending on the athlete or depending on if it's a very corrective type thing that I'm doing. People I might have just lay here and breathe for five, ten minutes, and they'll just be broke out into a giant sweat. Now, a lot of people have a big time, a, a really hard time exhaling, and what you're going to find, one thing that they start to do and try to cheat, is they're going to try to start exhaling with their butt. They'll start pushing on the wall harder and harder, and you can see they're actually squeezing their glutes, trying to get their hip in the right position to be able to exhale. We want to make sure that we're cueing. Don't. Well, we're making sure we're cueing not to do that. All right, because that's wrong. We don't exhale with the butt. We're trying to use our abs to exhale. So, if you have a client, and somebody that's weak, or you know, even a pretty good athlete that's not a very good breather, when they get here, you're going to have to watch it because your body will make sure that you breathe. And so, you're going to have all kinds of little compensations to start happening. The reason that we get in this easy position is because it's easier to see those compensations. And this position of stability right here makes it much easier to relearn the correct pattern. All right. Now that being said, this isn't really what I would do with Chad. He was already strong enough to exhale. Diaphragm's already strong enough to get air up there. He just needs to practice it. So what we're going to do is kind of go over this other drill here of driving air into the top of the lung. So we're going to hop up real quick. So after we have moved all the way back to that position, Obviously, we can kind of progress into more and more difficult positions to breathe in. Um, depending on how familiar you are with the kind of corrective model of moving from, you know, this high stability position to positions of lower and lower stability, so like a half kneeling, tall kneeling, into standing. A lot of times what you're going to see is that people will be able to start their breathing pattern in this position, but when they return to standing and they have to fight against gravity, they aren't quite strong enough yet to hold their hip in position, and with the hip being out of position, their diaphragm is going to be able to function the same way it was on the floor. So in order to drive air into the lungs, to the top of the lung, we're going to get into just a little bit different position. All right, so what I want you to do, feet are going to go all the way together. You're going to you try to keep your knees together as best you can. I'm just give your hands. Uh, let's do it from the side. And now I just want you to drop into the deepest spot you can. From here? Yep, and I'll hold you, so just drop back. <laughs> all right, now keep your chin tucked. Now I just want you to breathe. As big a breath as you can. Big, 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 big breath. And hold it for a second. So I like to take a big, 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 big breath here. And basically what we're doing is we're using Chad's thighs to offer more and more and more resistance. And this is forcing air up into the top of his lung. All right? More and more and more. Now, I want full exhales every single time. Go ahead, stand up. I want to... You're too heavy for me to hold the top. So I want him to make sure he's exhaling fully every single time. Now... One thing that you might see a lot, which is hard for me to see from the side, you'll see people with a real flat back right here and they're unable to kind of reverse the lumbar curve. Now, obviously we don't do that under load, but you should be capable of reversing your lumbar curve right here. If you cannot, you should see that people, if they're exhaling as hard as they can, will sink further and further down into this squat to where it might look, you hold my hands up. To where it might look something like this. They start off, they're here, thing you know you start to gain a little bit more and more mobility because as you're exhaling it gets easier and easier as you get down to start to exhale more and more you've got more and more resistance to your diaphragm you're driving air up all right so that's kind of the basics all right you know obviously there are a lot of other things going on with breathing um, we can do a lot of public positioning uh, there's a lot of you know if you have some asymmetries and things there's a lot we can do to use our breathing to help kind of bring you back facing the front um, but if you're going to really get into a lot of the more in-depth stuff you can do with breathing, you really need to go and have someone assess you and make sure you're doing the right thing. Because if you incorrectly assess that you have some asymmetry or that you need to do something one-sided or anything like that, and it's not actually what you need to be doing, then you're starting to kind of make the problem worse. Um, so rather than try to cover all of that stuff, 
you know, take these basics, um, and I guarantee you that you're going to be able to, you know, go to your clients, or yourself, or your athletes, um, and just with these basics, you're going to make instant change.